The Nexon EV has been on sale in India for a while now, and this latest iteration, launched last year, has everything you could ask for. It's got sharp looks, good performance, and a feature-loaded cabin as well. And it is one of the best EVs you could buy in the sub-20 lakh price bracket. Hey, Javier, don't forget Tata recently launched the Punch EV as well. And despite being a smaller car, it is based on a dedicated EV platform and has almost identical levels of features and tech. So I think this has enough punch now to steal some of that Nexon EV's thunder. Well, there's only one way to find out. Let's climb aboard and take them both for a spin. Let's do that. Come on. But wait, before you go any further, if you haven't subscribed to the Car and Bike channel, do remember to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification to stay up to date on all the latest content. And if you do enjoy this video, remember to hit the like button and share it with your friends. While Tata has positioned both the Punch EV and Nexon EV in the subcompact SUV space, they sit in two different segments and that becomes obvious in their sizes. The Nexon looks larger and wider than the Punch, which it is, and while it may appear taller in this video, it's the Punch that has the higher roof line thanks to its more tall boy proportions. The Punch even has a Nexon beat in terms of boot space, offering a claim 366 litres to the latter's 350 litres of luggage capacity. Tata's 2023 update to the Nexon EV really sharpened up the SUV's looks, and in my opinion, it now looks its best. The front end is now reminiscent of Tata's latest slew of concepts, replete with new split lighting setup featuring a full-width light bar and low-set headlamps and fog lamps. The rear too gets a full-width light bar incorporated into the tail lamps. Oh, and did I mention that the Nexon on the whole looks like a proper SUV, while the punch from some angles looks like a tall hatchback, which it is. But when you come to the Punch EV, you'll find that the styling is similar. After all, it is from the EV family. So you get this end-to-end -end connected LED DRL here as well. You get LED headlamps and the tail lamps are also LED units. Although they are not connected like the one on the Nexon EV. But how this electric car is different from the Nexon is because this is based on a dedicated electric vehicle platform called Acti EV from Tata Motors. What that has done is that Tata has been able to manage the cabin layout better so this feels a bit more spacious and usable compared to the Nexon EV. And in addition to that, you get a larger boot space and for the first time, a frunk in a Tata electric vehicle. When talking about the features between these two Tata EVs, the car maker literally blew it out of the park when it launched the updated Nexon in 2023. You got stuff like this 12.3 inch touchscreen, a 10.25 inch full digital instrument cluster with configurable displays, a wireless charger, electronic parking brake, ventilated front seats and a sunroof, which by the way can be opened and shut simply with voice commands. You also get bits like 360 degree camera, vehicle to load and vehicle to vehicle charging as well. When you move to the Punch EV, you get broadly all the same features. It gets the 360 degree camera, ventilated front seats, drive modes, electronic parking brake, full digital instrument cluster. Yes, it does get a smaller 10.25 inch touchscreen and it doesn't get the vehicle to vehicle or vehicle to load functionality, but you still get almost everything. As Javin mentioned, most of the features that you get in the Nexon EV have been replicated inside the Punch EV as well. So that is great. What I would like to talk about is that because of the Acti EV, electric vehicle platform, Tata has been able to manage the cabin space much better here. So it feels a lot more roomier despite being a smaller car. And even in this driver space, I feel that th there is a lot of space to move around and which is not the case in the Nexon EV. Also, the center console has a lot of storage spaces as well. So you can keep your phone and your other knickknacks right here, which again went missing in the Nexon EV. Now what the family car buyer will like about the Nexon EV is the amount of space there is at the back. The seat is wide enough to seat at two adults and a kid in relative good comfort. The only downside is that with the battery pack under the floor, the floor is, has been raised quite a bit, so you're sitting a bit knees up. Legroom wise, there is ample knee room over here. Headroom too is decent enough. And you get rear AC vents and a charging point here and one behind the seat. As you can see, this is where the Punch EV falls a bit short when compared to the Nexon EV. The rear seat space is not that great. Yes, the seats are well cushioned and the seating posture is 
slightly better but my legs and knee are gracing against the front seat now i am 5 feet 9 inches tall and this is set to my driving position so you can make an assumption as to what kind of space you are getting here you do have foldable central armrest so that is a good addition but you do not have cup holders here and also you are missing out on rear ac vents on also charging option right here at the back Now we move on to the next aspect of both these EVs which is the powertrain. Both the Nexon EV and the Punch EV come with two powertrain options, the details of which will be visible on your screen now. We start things off with the Nexon. This is a fully loaded long range model which comes with a 40.5 kWh battery and a claimed range of over 460 km. Well, from what we've tested, it will, the car will give you a real world range of around 300 kilometers, which isn't too bad, all things considered. Speaking about performance, the Nexon EV makes 215 Nm of torque, which is more than adequate. Put your foot down and the car launches itself forward. Tata claims a 0 to 100 time of under 9 seconds and we do believe the car is capable of achieving that. Speaking of the ride, the Nexon, like all modern Tatas, handles almost all road imperfections with ease. Yes, the suspension is slightly on the stiffer side, but then it is not jarring. The steering feels good to hold in the hand and has adequate weight and feedback so you to accurately place the cars through the corners. That said, the next one is a heavy SUV, so if you do drive it enthusiastically, you will feel some body roll under hard cornering. Owners can even adjust the level of performance via the drive mode selector on the center console. There are three modes to pick from with Eco maximizing range and Sport offering the strongest performance. Additionally, you can also select the level of energy regeneration by steering mounted paddle shifters. There are four levels to pick from ranging from zero or off to its highest setting of three. Coming to the Punch EV, here too the car is no slouch by any measure. In fact, uh, driving these two cars back to back, I can tell you that uh, the Punch EV feels a lot more peppier and agile compared to the Nexon EV. And a lot of that has to do with the car's proportions. Yes, this is a lighter car after all. And that aids in that additional boost that you get to enjoy while you're driving it. Now, the car offers a peak torque output of 190 Newton meters, and that is a decent number. In fact, I feel that is more than adequate for this car, and uh, you will never be disappointed with the performance that this Punch EV has to offer. As for how the car performs on the road, uh, I have to say the ride quality is spot on. In fact, I feel that this is nicer than the Nexon EV because it is set a bit on the softer side. So it feels a lot more plush and supple. It takes on the small and big undulations on the road quite nicely and gives you a comfortable ride. And uh, minimum harshness is felt inside the cabin. As for handling, here too the Punch EV performs quite nicely. Uh, in fact, yes, the Nexon EV did feel a lot more planted on the road and that has to do with that added weight. However, the Punch EV is not bad. Yes, it feels a bit nimbler, but there is no lack of confidence while you're driving it. The straight line stability is nice. The steering feel is also good and solid. So yes, I have no complaints with the Punch on that aspect as well. As I mentioned before, the Punch EV also comes in both medium range and long range options. And the long range version that we are driving today comes with a 35 kilowatt hour battery pack that offers a claimed range of a little over 400 kilometers on a single charge. Now, on realistically speaking, in everyday city commute and driving, uh, I can say that the Punch EV is good enough to offer you anywhere between 250 to 275 kilometers on a single charge. Yes, this too gets region option, uh, four levels, just like the Nexon using these paddle shifters. So yes, overall, I think Tata has done a nice job in giving you a package that is very similar to its bigger electric car. Both the Punch EV and Nexon EV support DC fast charging with almost identical charge times. There is also support for up to 7.2 kilowatts of AC charging, though it is an option on the Punch. All in all, Tata has taken a huge step forward with the latest Nexon EV. It's got all the strengths of space and comfort from its predecessors and takes a large leap forward in terms of features and technology. And all of that in a sub rupees 20 lakh price bracket. Well, I agree, but you too have to agree that the Punch EV makes a quite an interesting proposition, especially when you see that it is affordable, practical, and at the same time gets similar level of creature comforts compared to the Nexon EV. And at the current price range, this also is a very compelling package for anyone looking at buying the mid-range Nexon EV.
So, in a nutshell, the Tata Punch EV will appeal to the personal buyer looking for a city-friendly, compact, urban electric SUV that they can use as a daily runabout. The next one, meanwhile, will appeal more to the family buyer looking for a more spacious car to fit in more people. And you also get advantage of more power and greater range. Well, that's true. So, if you like this video, do give it a thumbs up and share it with your friends. And for more such automotive content, keep following Car and Bike. And let us know in the comments if you have any opinion or suggestions regarding more comparisons like this.